Hello, tech team and directors. Um, I'm just going to give you some of the notes that I shared with your class while you guys were doing the lights uh, the other day. So you have this handout under lesson eight if you want to follow along there and write some things down. So basically I went through um, what is art. So if we were to do just a straight up Google on what is art, there'd be so many things. But what, what essentially art is, is um, we want to think about what is unique about the arts. It's usually not something that's thought of as part of a natural world or other activities that we partake in. So it usually like, what are the unique aspects of art? Basically, these are the four unique aspects. So it's going to be, it's organized sound, if you're talking about music. So there's something organized. It's created by humans for humans. Okay. It's a human activity. So if it, in, if you are talking about music specifically, um, there's lots of arguments to say, well, the birds and the trees, that's music. Um, I'm not going to get into that debate right now, uh, but because then birds and the trees singing would not be art or music because it's not organized although you might say birds are super organized, it's not, but it's not created by humans for humans. It's not a human activity. Um, and the fourth one is it's a way to express our emotions and our feelings, which is, which is part of the uniqueness of, of art. The nature of art is it varies in the form that it takes. So if we're talking particularly about music, it's about, it can be in singing, it can be in instrumental, there can be composition, it can be analyzing, recording. Um, that, so it has a variety of forms. It's born out of the human need to express. We, we have this desire to kind of reach beyond our immediate and it reaches an aesthetic dimension that is really hard to be reached through any other mediums other than through music, art, drama. Okay. Again, it's a human activity. All humans are capable of creating music and humans do create music. So when I talked in another class about music is not a universal language, this is different because across the globe, we know that humans partake in arts and, and music specifically. Um, we, and so that's not the issue. It's just if we can actually understand everybody's music. Okay. It's a way to communicate within a culture, right? So again, it comes back to that. We have to understand. And the way that art works is that there's a, we can actually communicate with each other, but there's a little bit of a cultural, we have to have a cultural understanding. It gives a sense of identity. And I know that when my youngest daughter, when she was still living at home with us and I would be driving her around and you know, she'd have a radio station on to some pop, pop station. And I would start singing along and she would shut it off because she didn't want me as her middle-aged mother to be listening to her teenage music. So it's a definitely a sense of identity there. And, you know, they have battles about, oh, I'm a classic rock person versus country rock or whatever. You know, it's, it, it, there's definitely sort of teams of, of how you, what you identify with as, as, um, as an art form. It is something you have to experience. Again, remember when I was, I was uh, telling you about that, um, about that, that experience that I had in Norway. I mean, I can tell you about that, but you have to be there to experience it. You have, you have to experience it yourself. That's the nature of art. And when it stirs any emotion, it's doing its job. So it doesn't have to be a f nice emotion. It can stir a really um, negative or a really vehement emotion. But as long as it stirs some kind of emotion, that's why some people say elevator music is not actually music or art because it's just organized noise, but it's not actually music because it doesn't stir any of our emotions. Okay. Why is art important? Um, I think life would be pretty dreary and bleak without it. It's no one would die, but there would be a quality of life that would definitely be missing. And I think art 
really enriches our lives. So it's the difference between existing and living, right? Uh, just think about no movies, no plays, no musicals, no singing, no dancing, no paintings on the wall. Like it would be kind of bleak and dreary. So number two, the arts represent an, an important difference between existing and living. Oh, look, it's there twice. Um, art provides an avenue for expression. Okay. It, art is found across the globe and across time. So when I was in Egypt, uh, we were looking at hieroglyphics and there are, you know, pictures of people with lutes and harps. It's across the globe and across the time. And so we, as, as humans evolve and change, we leave behind things that are not necessary to take us to the next sort of level. However, if we didn't need music, and art, it would have been left behind a long time ago, but it keeps coming throughout the ages with us. Okay. Um, it supports the communication of culture throughout, through art. It helps us to engage with and understand our own, um, our own culture, uh, because we have seen a play about, uh, an, uh, a particular aspect of our culture, or we've seen a, uh, a movie or we've seen a painting that we go, wow, I never thought about um, homelessness, let's say, in this particular way. And it develops one of the intelligences. If you, uh, I know Howard Gardner's in, uh, multiple intelligences are not as uh, in vogue as they once were, but if you still think that we have this, this sense of multiple intelligences, then it's mus the musical and the visual are definitely um, one of the intelligence in, up there. So if we if we go, well, you know what? Well, yeah, we think art is pretty important in life. Then it should equate to, we should think that arts education is also important. But unfortunately, that isn't always the case. In, in our schools, we often see whenever there's a budget cut, the arts education programs are cut. Usually phys ed is cut as well, but arts education are like the first to go. So I would say that we generally, as an education system, don't really value arts education. So what I went through with your colleagues was just some justification for arts education. And I divided it into, a, sorry, aesthetic or artistic and then referential or non-artistic reasons. So I defined aesthetic as concerned with feelings, non-practical nature, both intellect and emotion are evolved, has to be the focus of attention. And the result of the aesthetic experience is a richer and more meaningful life. Okay. So if you're talking to a principal, you also probably want to include some referential or non-artistic experiences. This is where the value of the experience is found outside of the art experience itself. It does not have to be specifically tied to the arts experience. It can happen in other life circumstances. So let me explain. So these are kind of what I, uh, I see as the top 11 aesthetic reasons why you would want to have arts education in your school system. So it inducts students into a unique system of nonverbal symbols. So they don't always have to be so um, so amazing at actually reading. They can actually interpret colors and shapes in visual arts. They can interpret sounds uh, in music, right? You, they can interpret movement in drama. So there's a whole bunch of nonverbal symbols that that happen. Engages imagination, enables students to develop artistic talent, reveals, explores, uh, and explore richness. I'm just going to kind of cruise these. Yada, 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 yada. I think the biggest one here is the arts are a gray area. There are no right and wrong answers. It teaches them how to deal with ambiguity. I think as we go into a society where black and white is not going to be nearly, black and white thinking is not going to be nearly as important as gray. I think the arts are going to have a real, um, a real 
come back, a real renaissance um, in education. That's what I'm hoping anyways. These are justification for arts education from a referential or non-artistic point of view. So develop citizenships, there's health benefits, um, it helps literacy, numeracy, arts schools to achieve goals beyond themselves, moral character. So again, your principal might say, yeah, but I could also get a, have a basketball team or a chess club. And it's true. These are these are not necessarily only um, artistic benefits. These are non-artistic. So, if you are putting an argument together, I would suggest that you combine some aesthetic and some referential because sometimes you might have a principal, and these guys are just too sort of airy fairy. They're like, no, I can't, or they, I just can't deal with this. So throw in a few of these guys and then go back and throw in a few of these because then it might, it might be a better, a better argument in there. So again, I think what is it about arts education that makes it unique and valuable? It inducts students into a unique system of nonverbal symbols. It enlivens the spirit of the student and arts are a gray area. I think those are going to be your key arguments to the uniqueness of arts education that you cannot, um, that you can't get through a basketball team. And what can we do to ensure a strong, effective, and innovative arts education program? Teacher training, like you guys just did. You've done a couple arts courses uh, where you were taught uh, the foundations as well as why arts are important. Collaborate with professional artists. So find some artists out there that you can bring in so that the kids can actually see that there's life outside of school for arts. Partnership with schools and arts communities. Again, take them to Medelta. Take them to uh, uh, the Esplanade. You know, take them to a show, a play, those kind of things. So again, they see that it's out there. And you are the best advocate. As the teacher in the school, you're going to be the best advocate um, to inspire your kids and to um, just to really show them that they're are amazing, amazing things that they can learn through the arts. Okay, this is how, if you want to use this handout as a reference, this is how you cite it. And there you go, the fast and furious importance of the arts lecture just for you. Take care.